What's poppin'? Doo -doo 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 -doo. Nah, I'm just playing. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Hollywood AJ back with another episode. Hope you guys are doing great this week. How am I doing? Uh, as you can see, I am exhausted. Only getting four hours of sleep per night. That is my new eight hours. Dealing with the dad life. Birth of my new baby boy, young Kyrie. Yep. Living the dad life, that's for sure. But you know is what it is you guys don't want to hear about my life story so let's get down to business ufc 278 we got kamaru uzman versus leon edwards the we match from 2015 it's a, it's a pretty stacked card for it being in salt lake city utah and if i didn't have kids this weekend i probably would be there in utah because i think utah you know i went there before for a convention and it was super boring and I'm like, the only way I'll ever go back to Utah is if the NBA Finals are there or if the Lakers are there or if there's a UFC fight there. Well, hey, there's a UFC fight there. Too bad I can't go. It is what it is. But it is a stacked card this weekend. I mean, we got great matchups with a plenty of high stake intensity going on here in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. We got Jose Aldo versus Marab Devashvili. I hope I said that right. And then we have the one and only Luke Rockhold returning after three years to fight Paulo Boracinha living la vida costa costa. It's a big fight in the middleweight division. Definitely. Both men are at crossroads and they definitely have this do or die matchup that will make or break their career. Then the big one that we're all paying hard, hard earned money for Kamaru Usman, Leon Edwards too. It's an old fashioned fight card, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, Go back to the day. Go back to even shoot 2014, 2013, just before women were in the UFC, when it was just an old-fashioned UFC card, one title fight, and a big co-main event. I'm getting major nostalgia right now, and I cannot wait for this Saturday. You know, Jose and Mirab, that's a big fight for the bantamweight division. I'm not really going to give my prediction on that. I'm going to give my prediction on Rockhold, Costa, Edwards, Usman. So let's do it. Costa, Rockhold. Like I said, it's it's a big fight, especially being that these guys are on a skid. Luke Rockhold hasn't fought in three years. His last fight being against Jan Blachowicz, 2019, UFC 239. I was there. I saw Luke get his head knocked into the third row. And I got to be honest, I felt pretty bad. I did. But it is it is what it is. Jan, that's not a, that's not a loss to really hang your head about because Jan went on to be the light heavyweight champion. So, Luke took all of 2020, all of 2021 off, basically all of 2022 off, and is finally back. But before that loss to Jan, his last fight was at middleweight. That was four years ago. The Jan fight was at light heavyweight. So, his last time out at middleweight was four years ago against Yoel Romero. Before then, he had a good win against David Branch. And before then, lost the title to Michael Bisping. So, he's only fought basically once in the past six years and excluding the two years that he took off taking three years off that's not good i don't care what sport you're in it's even hard in crocheting when you don't do something you're good at for three years it definitely gets you and it definitely makes you feel a little bit of doubt of do i still got it do i still have what it takes because let's not forget luke rockhold was a ufc middleweight champion he defeated my boy chris weidman at ufc 194 and I was just like, man, you know, I could see Luke getting a pretty long title reign. I could see it. But then Left Hook Larry, a.k.a. Michael Bisbing, silenced all the doubters and made everyone eat their words. But nonetheless, you know, three years out of the octagon is tough. And that's what scares me about Luke in this fight. Not only has he had a win in five years, five years he hasn't had a win. I'm just scared of the time he's taken off. Sure, George St. Pierre came back after four years. And won the middleweight title. Sure, Dominic Cruz came back after a year and took the title off. He came back after three years and won a fight. It's different. Some people have ring rust. Some people think it's just the biggest myth of all time. Now, Paulo Costa, on the other hand, he's different. He was on the Ultimate Fighter Brazil. Came out guns a blazing. Started out 13-0, defeating the likes of Uriah Hall, Johnny Hendricks, former UFC welterweight champion. Yoel Romero had a one of the best fights I've ever seen with Yoel Romero. So he did great. He started off blistering hot, and many people thought, okay, 
Paulo can be the one and only threat to Israel Adesanya. He could probably even beat Israel Adesanya. Israel Adesanya toyed with him like a puppet. He did whatever he wanted to do in that octagon. I mean, kicks to the kicks, body kicks, head kicks. Israel chopped him down like a tree. Then the excuses came out. Paulo Costa said he couldn't sleep the night before because the fight was in Abu Dhabi. So he had to drink a whole bottle of wine just to go to bed and woke up hungover. That is the most blasphemous, ridiculous excuse anyone has ever heard of. I mean, the whole MMA community, including myself, were clowning him. And I just, I absolutely loved it. And then he takes a, almost, eh, he took a year off. He took a year off, came back in October 2021, fought Marvin Vittori. But there was more controversy behind that because he came in overweight. They wanted the fight to be at catch weight. Paulo wanted the fight to be at heavyweight. He didn't want to cut weight. And you could kind of tell Paulo just wasn't there. He wasn't in the right mental space. Marvin, being the true gamer that he is, moved up. The fight was made at light heavyweight. And he outclassed him for five rounds. In a way, you kind of can't even count that because it was in a different weight class. Paulo has been active. Yet, Luke Rockhold, he seems to hit that second win in his career. Where what a lot of fighters do. Dominic Cruz did that. Robbie Lawler did that. Um... Who else did that? Alistair Overeem did that. I mean, a who's who of fighters have done that. But this fight has me extremely conflicted on who will win. I really do not know. I want Luke Rockhold to win, but I know Paulo is on a mission. He knows that that wasn't the best version of himself against Israel Adesanya. And if he could go out there and prove it against Luke Rockhold... Then he could be next in line for possibly a shot at the title should Israel Adesanya get past Alex Pierre. Luke Rockhold, though, he's going to have to weather a storm. He's going to have to weather two storms. And this fight may have to go deep. It's only three rounds. Not a lot of time. But he's going to have to go deep. He's going to have to go and really dig to a place where he's never dug before. He's faced adversity. Paulo doesn't do that good with adversity. So I think the mindset... You're going to have to put it in favor of Luke. That being said, man, I, I, I think Paulo Costa might get it done. I do. I do. I, I think Luke is very chinny these days. Michael Bisbee knocked him out. Yoel Romero knocked him out. Jan Blachowicz knocked him out. Vitor Belfort knocked him out. He is very, very chinny. And Paulo Costa hits like a heavyweight. Luke, he, he seems, like I said, he seems to be in this mental state where he's going to match fire with fire, and that could be a very bad thing for him. That could be a very bad thing, and I hope it's not. I want Luke to win, but I think Paulo's going to get the job done via second round TKO. Let's go to the main event. As I said, this is a Wii match back from 2015. Now, this was very early. In both men's careers. Kamaru Usman. Fresh off the Ultimate Fighter. This was Leon Edwards fourth fight in the promotion. He came in the promotion in 2014. Lost his first fight in the promotion. So already he's off to a bad start in the UFC. He wins his next two. Then is paired up with Kamaru. He beats Seth Bozinski. Eight second knockout. Most impressive. Really a good bounce back win. From not having a good outing his first time. But he fights Kamaru. And Kamaru... He definitely doesn't have the he didn't have the holes in his game like he does now. He's a much better striker. He definitely has always been a great wrestler. But Leon couldn't wrestle for shit. He his striking is his bread and butter. But what did Kamaru Usman do to negate that? Was just wrestle his ass off. That fight wasn't that good. And I guarantee you, no one knew. I'm pretty sure none of you guys knew that they fought until UFC re-uploaded their first fight back from 2015. I'm sure the casuals were like Oh, these guys fought? Oh, man. They're fighting this weekend? I had no idea. Like, yeah, you, you get the idea. So you can't count that first fight. It was kind of a snooze fest. Kamaru just laid on him for three rounds, kind of the same way he fought Jorge. And yeah, you kind of can't count that first fight because both guys have grown tremendously since that fight on December 19th, 2015. Let's not forget, Leon Edwards went on the longest win streak in the division's history, the welterweight division, that is. Nine fight win streak, defeating Albert Tumanoff, Cowboy Cerrone. Ever heard of him? 
Rafael Dos Anjos, ever heard of him? Nate Diaz, ever heard of him? He had a little hiccup with Bilal Muhammad. That fight landed being a no contest, but he has definitely fought his way back and earned himself a shot at the title. He should have earned it five fights ago, four fights ago, but no. He waited patiently, a few strings of bad luck, but with those strings of bad luck, he has had kind of extra time to really prepare for Kamaru because while he was kind of on the outside looking in, Kamaru was fighting. He fought. Four years after that win against Leon, Kamaru got a shot at the title against Tyron. We all know how that went. Defended his belt against Covington twice, Masvidal twice, Gilbert Burns, and yeah, that was it. Gilbert Burns, and this will be Kamaru Usman's third straight rematch in a row. I have learned not to bet on Kamaru Usman. I, I thought Masvidal was going to beat him. I thought Gilbert Burns was going to beat him. I thought Colby Covington was going to beat him. I'm going to stop betting against Kamaru Usman. But that does not mean Leon can't beat him because he can. Leon is dangerous on the feet. He doesn't really have that one punch knockout power like Kamaru Usman, but he has the precision of a watchmaker. And that could be the most dangerous fighter for Kamaru Usman, the dangerous type of fight. He's not a brawler like Covington. He's not a brawler like Masvidal. He will pick his shots and he will do that all night. He'll just pep you with the jab. He'll jab you to death. He'll front kick you to death. He'll throw one twos down the center until you're stuck, come in and get knocked down or get knocked out. I think, like I said, that fight you can't really count. But I think these guys have really grown and Leon is definitely known for the meme that Nate Diaz could have almost finished him, but he didn't because Nate Diaz is an idiot. But we all know that this is definitely a big fight for both men, regardless if it's a title fight, definitely for bragging rights to really prove who is better. But I got Kamaru Usman winning, I say, second round TKO. I think he drops him in the first, drops him in the second, controls him on the ground for a bit, and then finishes him off via TKO. And Kamaru Usman is still the reigning defending UFC welterweight champion. But I would not be surprised if Leon goes and wins a few rounds off of Kamaru because Kobe Covington definitely wants some rounds off Kamaru. But Leon Edwards is a way better striker than Kamaru. But I just see Kamaru getting it done. I just think that he... Again, I just need to stop betting against him. Maybe if I stop betting against him, maybe one of his opponents will win. Maybe that'll happen here. I don't know. We'll see.